Hello everyone, my name is Kiva and I teach people how to achieve the luxe look for less. In today's video, we're talking about some interior design mistakes that make your home look tacky. These are really teeny tiny mistakes, but if you're making them, they're having a huge negative impact on your home. But don't worry, I'm gonna give you all the tools to fix them. Before we get into today's video though, please don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and check me out on Instagram, but let's get into it. So like I said, today's video is about things in your living room specifically that look tacky. Now tacky is never a good thing. There's no way to spin the word tacky to mean something positive. If you're doing these things, they're a little bit dated, they're a little bit ugly, but don't worry, we have some quick fixes. And always remember that no matter what I say in today's video or tomorrow's video, your home should look exactly the way you want it to. So the first thing that makes your living room look tacky is that you went overboard with your color palette. So I want to applaud you. I wanna applaud you for choosing a color palette. That's, that's hard, right? People really struggle with this. People get so overwhelmed with choosing a color palette, they just don't, right? Everything's rainbow or everything's all one color and sometimes it's a choice, but other times it's just by default. It's just easiest, it's overwhelming. So choosing a color palette is really hard. So if you've done that, that's great. But something people do all the time is they take it too far. We've all been in those homes. We've all been in those homes and someone has a red sofa with a red rug, with red accent pillows, with red drapes, um, with red tea or something like that. Everything is red, everything's blue, everything's yellow. They chose a color and it's like the color threw up in their house. It's like literally like a Care Bear party. They took the color and they threw it up on the walls. And I, I understand wanting to stick your color palette. I admire you for trying to do that, but sometimes it just goes a little bit too far. Now I'm not saying don't incorporate color. Color is great. You don't have to live like me. You know, I know that's not for everyone. Color is great, but you gotta mix up the shade of the color, the amount of the color, how you present that color. So maybe if you like the color blue, right? You might have some blue in your rug, but your rug is predominantly white, or it might have some green or some beige in it as well. It's not all blocks of one color, right? People mix it up in terms of pattern and texture, and that's really important because if everything is the same, it loses its value. It's not visually interesting, it's flat, and honestly, I'm just kind of like, why is this room themed, you know what I mean? Um, but you can have a blue room and really like it and have maybe blue in one of your patterns, blue in some texture, different shades of you, different hues of blue, different amounts of blue and the different things. You can have a color and really drive that color home and not go overboard with it, right? Because it turns your home from being a themed home to being a home that's really well curated and you just have an emphasis on a particular color. We talk about this all the time. We talk about repetition, cohesion, flow. We want all of those things, but that doesn't mean that we're going to copy and paste what we do in one room on one surface in all the other rooms and on all of the other surfaces. So I see this in living rooms all the time. We're working to make them look cohesive um, and curated and sophisticated, but sometimes they just end up looking too patchy. Patchy is the best adjective I can come up. It looks like maybe you went in a catalog and they're trying to sell you on this new pattern of the year, right? So of course, in the catalog, they have the sofa in the pattern, the rug in the pattern, the pillow on the pattern, the this on the pattern, right? And they're trying to get you to buy the things, but probably separately, not all together, but you're like, well, they did it here, I'm gonna do it at home. And then there's just like a disconnect and it just looks too busy and everything loses its value. Again, if everything looks the same, I don't know where to look and therefore I'm not really looking anywhere. The next reason why your living room looks tacky is because you are afraid of dead space. If you don't know what dead space means, it basically is empty space. It's a wall that is empty, right? And people are terrified of dead space. I don't know, maybe it's because like it's called dead space, so like the dead like really just like <laughs> rubs you off, but empty space, it's the same thing. People are terrified of dead space, but you need it. Every space needs dead space, and I'm gonna tell you why. So what you see all the time, people will have a picture on this wall, and that wall, and this wall, and that wall, and I'm like, okay. It's just, again, it's visually a lot, right? And people are afraid of bare walls. They're like, if my wall's bare, people will think I didn't design my home. But dead space is such a valuable thing because it helps break up your wall, it helps segment your artwork and your decor. So this is especially useful in open concept. So let's talk about my living room, for example. There's not really any art up now, so actually this is a great room to work with. So when I have this big mirror behind me, it's a glorious mirror. I used to have art on the other side. 
I think that that looked nice too. You can have art on the other side or you can leave it there. It depends on where you want people's attention to go to, right? Because if you have a bunch of things on one wall and there's no dead space, everything is competing with one another. Same thing goes for just like the walls in my home, right? I have this wall over here. I have the wall the mirrors on. I have walls over here. I have wall space in between my windows. If I put something on every single piece of wall available, it is too busy. It is just overwhelming, right? The things that look tacky you're finding in this video are just overwhelming to the eye. And again, we're spending so much time, so much money curating these spaces. We actually want people to stop and look at them. When there isn't dead space, there's too much clutter, especially on the walls. Not only is it just like hard to look at, but it makes the space feel small, right? And a small space is never ideal. We wanna make our homes look as large and as grand as physically possible. Possible. And I even talked about this just last week in my 2022 trends video, and it was about the gallery wall, replacing gallery walls with just large pieces of art because again, so much clutter, so much competition, you don't really know where to look. Just imagine that people have gallery walls on every wall space available. Just there's nothing to look at, right? Then I feel like everything down below, all of the furniture, all of the styling has to be so simple to compensate for the fact that there is so much going on at the walls that if you put something down below, the house just looks messy. I see people especially make this tacky mistake in places where you have light switches. So wherever you have your light switch, a thermostat, a security system, people are like, I feel like I need to put something on this wall. No, the only thing on that wall is the security system or the light switch. You may be trying to draw attention from that, but at the end of the day, everyone knows it's there. Honestly, you don't really want to draw attention away from that. You want people to know where the lights are. You want people to know how to arm the house. You want to know where your keys are. And all of those things tend to be congregated in the same space. So if you're dealing with a sliver of wall, which is kind of what I'm talking about, I'm not talking about a big, massive wall, but a sliver of wall, it's okay for it to be empty. This also happens a lot of the time in an entryway. You'll have a door and then maybe you'll have four or five inches of space on either side and people feel inclined to throw a lamp in there throw a um you know a plant a something a big vase you're just trying to fill up the space and the space doesn't need to be full especially spaces that people don't look at regularly right so if you're walking into a home and you have space on either side of the doors, you really need to think about what you see as you come in the home, right? So whatever's going on in the foyer, whatever's going on to the side of the door doesn't really matter who's looking like that until it's time to leave. And again, how someone feels on the departure of one's home is not as significant as how one feels upon the entrance of a home. So whatever's going on on either side, it's really unnecessary. And then when you do see it, it's really cluttered, right? Because you're taking away from a door. Doors are expensive. Doors tend to be ornate they're doing enough in themselves, right? You want to put your money, your time, your effort styling into the things that people actually see once they're properly in the home. Some walls can be empty. And honestly, this is going to save you a lot of money because I feel like people try and find little pieces, little tchotchkes to throw up on the wall and fill these spaces. It just looks cluttered. The scale is almost always off. Just skip it all together. It looks tacky and you're going to save a bunch of money once you remedy it. Now this one, this is the one that really gets me the most. This is the one where I thought about it and I was like, I got to make this video on um, things looking tacky. And again, I want to say every single thing that I'm talking about in this video are things that I've done myself. I am always right there with you because interior design is a journey for everyone. So don't feel bad. Even the professionals are where you are at some point in life. But the next thing that really looks tacky, that really grinds my gears is bookshelf styling. So there are two ends of the spectrum and I literally despise them both. Okay. So at one end, we have the very empty styling. And then on the other hand, you have a very, very cluttered styling. So let's talk about both. And I'm going to tell you about why both of them look tacky. So we're going to talk about the empty styling now. This happens a lot with the contemporary design lovers, um, the modern design lovers. Again, I've fallen subject to this one, definitely this one. We will get these shelves. We'll spend a lot of money on these shelves or making these shelves. We make these shelves and then we don't put anything on them. And I'm like, isn't the whole point of a shelf to hold something, but there's nothing on them. There's like one bowl. And I'm like, are you still working on it? Are you waiting for something to come in the mail? But they're just empty. And I'm just kind of like, if you're going to get shelves and make them empty, shelves in themselves don't look that good. Unless they're really, really expensive shelves, you've carved them, um, they have a story written on them. I don't know. I don't literally don't know what you could do to make a shelf really that interesting. 
the point of a shelf is to be a vehicle for other things, specifically books, but it's supposed to be a vehicle for other things. So if you're not putting other things on that shelf, the shelf isn't really serving a purpose. If you're gonna get a shelf and you're not gonna style it, just don't get the shelf. There's so many other things you could put up against a wall. And let me tell you, shelves take away a lot of floor space, right? Because they're always deep. They're always at least 12 inches deep. That's a foot, right? And sometimes they're 16 inches, 18 inches. They're very deep. They take up a lot of floor space. So if you have no utility for one, don't even add it. Instead, add a mirror, mount that on the wall, add artwork, put that on the wall. Those things are a lot more exciting and they just make more sense. Plus they give you so much more space to actually maneuver your home. This is especially true when you're dealing with um, bookshelves that are kind of floating in space. So if a bookshelf is up against a wall kind of like this, it doesn't matter as much, right? Because there's nothing behind that. You're not seeing the, the side view of those shelves. But if you're walking along a room and a bookshelf is sticking out from the wall and you can see it because you might be to the right or the left of that shelf, I'll put up a visual so that makes more sense it's really wasting space and you're really heavily made aware of it. So if that styling isn't like the bomb.com, there's no reason to have that shelf. Just add art, add something that's a little bit less deep that is going to make a lot more sense for your space. And also, if you don't like too much clutter, right, that's why you've kept your shelves minimal. Instead of having an open shelf, just get a closed shelf. You still have the closed shelf. It still adds something. You can have something with cool handles. Again, it can be visually interesting. They shell closed shelves that are visually interesting. Um, and just keep it closed. Have the few things in there that you want to have. It actually will have storage space. And you can just do a little bit of styling on top, and that can be your minimal touch. But let's talk about the overstyled shelves. So, like, what is the point? <laughs> <laughs> right? If you have that many things, we need to figure out a better storage system. Now, if you're a maximalist, this doesn't apply to you, of course, so don't write it down in the comments. It does not apply to you. That's okay. But if you can't figure out how to style your shelves or you have too many things, stop shopping. You're doing too much shopping. Less is more, but not less less is more, <laughs> right? Not what I was talking about before, but less is more. You want to be strategic with your shelf styling. For example, if on the top shelf you have something in the middle, you don't want to also put something on the middle of the other one and and then on the left and right as well, that's too much, right? I don't know what to look at. They're competing with one another. So if I have something on the middle of a top shelf, then on the next shelf, maybe I'll have something on the left side or on the right side or both, but not something in the middle as well. You want to stagger your decor so that it's not overwhelming. But a lot of the times I see a ton of decor on every single shelf. And I'm just kind of like, is this a storage system or is this like a vignette, right? If it's a vignette, let's eliminate it. We're doing too much, less is more. Let's choose the things we actually wanna put on the display and put them there. I think the reason that a lot of people fall into this tacky mistake is that they don't scale things appropriately for the shelves and you feel like you have to throw a lot on there for the shelves to look full. Measure the shelves in terms of width, length, and depth before you go shopping so you get something that's appropriately sized so that you don't overfill those surfaces. This overcrowding also happens when you're trying to put decor and books on a bookshelf. So a bookshelf is called a bookshelf. So I want you to prioritize your books. I know, I feel like no one says that in the design community, but bookshelves are for books. If you have books, please don't tuck your books away to put out your fake books. Don't tuck your good, useful books away to put out your coffee table books. Your useful books come first. So maybe your bookshelves aren't for other people. Maybe they actually just have a practical purpose. Put your bookshelves on this, like put your books on your bookshelves and configure everything around that. If all your books have a place, you can access them easily. You can find what you need to find when you need to find it. Then you can add some decor if there's empty space. But if not, your bookshelf is just for books then. And that's totally okay, right? We live in our homes, we read our books, we wanna access our books. Yes, my wife's medical books are not not the most attractive, but I'd rather have her have her have access to the information she needs to like help someone than me look at my Tom Ford book, right? I feel like that makes a lot of sense. And if after I said that you're like, well, Kiva, like that doesn't really look good. Like my books not look good. I'm with you. Then don't make the bookshelf the focal point of the room. So I'm working with a client right now and she had these beautiful built-in bookcases in her office, but she reads all the time. She uses them for work. So we were going to style them, but the styling didn't work because she wanted to use the books. So instead of putting her desk right in front of that bookshelf where you can see all of the books, all of like the gaps, the imperfections, just her stuff that she uses all the time. We're going to rotate the desk so that the bookcase is not the backdrop of her Zoom calls. The bookcase is not what you're primarily looking at now. Now you're looking at her executive desk and the art behind it. Just reconfigure room so that your bookshelves aren't front and center so that they can be practical and not make the room look messy. 
The next design your mistake you're making that looks super tacky is that you're over cluttering your surfaces. So we just touched on this a little bit when it came to the shelves, but this applies to all surfaces. Your kitchen countertops, your kitchen cabinets, your console tables, your coffee tables, your sideboards. We don't need to style every inch of everything, right? If we're spending all this money on these console tables that are actually made of wood and not veneer, they have all these details, why are we covering them up? I feel like we're always covering something up, but there's actual beauty in some of the furniture that we buy, especially when it's a little bit more expensive. Now, if you're getting just like really basic furniture, obviously this does not apply to you, but this is something that I do want to say. Again, when we're styling surfaces, we wanna think about the rule of threes. We're gonna group things in threes and kind of call it a day. Same thing as we talked about with the shelf styling, we don't want something on both ends of the sideboard and also in the middle of the sideboard, right? We do not want that. We want something on one side, maybe both sides, but not in the middle or just in the middle. We want things to be simple. We want things to be digestible. We want things to be palatable. I'm just finding synonyms at this point, but you know what I'm trying to say. Simple is good, but this, the things you use to style don't have to be simple, but the styling itself should be simple. So maybe you'll have something that is made out of a hammered metal. Maybe you'll have an organic piece of wood. Maybe you'll have something that's ceramic. You can have three different textures, three different heights, three different colors, but only three things. So it's very simple in the number of things that you're doing, but there is so much to unpack there that it packs a punch even though it's only three things on one table. It's something that I really want to take with you. Again, if we're getting the scale wrong, we feel inclined to add more things than we need to. So we want to pay attention to scale. I harp on scale in every video. I'm not going to bore you on it today, but we need to be mindful of scale. This particularly is bothersome when it comes to coffee tables because we overclutter our coffee tables so much that we cannot actually use them. You know, you come sit down, you're having people over and you're like, oh, sorry, there's nowhere to put your cup even though your coffee table is 48 inches wide. Why is there nowhere to put my cup? Why is it covered in stuff? Let me use my stuff. I really think the, the source of this problem is also like Instagram, right? Because myself included, I'll post these things where I've styled something, but also five minutes later when I need to use it, I'm gonna pick it up and put it somewhere practical a yes ma'am because I want to use my surfaces so our online styling is not the same thing we do day to day I know I've, I've let the cat out of the bag I don't care it's my job to tell you guys the truth so we want to do styling that makes sense that allows us to continue using our surfaces because we paid for our surfaces and we live with our surfaces I a lot of people eat in front of the TV right so you want to be able to put your food down on the coffee table you don't want to have to say oh excuse me candle could you move out of the way no that doesn't make any sense so Less is more when it comes to styling. So style the things heavily that you never touch. So if you're one of those people who has a bookcase and you're not gonna put any books on it, style the heck out of it, style the heck out of it. Make it look great, again, still follow the rules, but style the heck out of it so that everywhere else you can have a little bit more minimal styling. Okay guys, that's it for today's video. Those were four interior design mistakes that are making your home look tacky. I know, I hate to call you tacky, but that's exactly what it is. And if you fix these things and they're super easy to fix, your house is going to look so much more sophisticated. If you liked today's video, please don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and check me out on Instagram. And until next time, have a beautiful day.